Okay, Chase Koshelitz here, head coach at Blue Zone, and we are going to cover absolutely everything you could possibly want to know about paddling out. Now, this video is going to be super valuable for beginner sub surfers, but even if you're an advanced sub surfer, I think there's some things uh, that you're going to learn, uh, especially further along in the video. So, the first thing I want to talk about is safety. Before you're paddling out, you should be looking at the conditions and paddling out in conditions that you know you can safely surf in. Um, also, the other thing from a safety standpoint is to make sure you are not paddling out into a crowded lineup, uh, especially if you're a beginner sub surfer, you should not be paddling out into a crowd, go down to the beach where there is no one. More advanced sub surfers um, can be in a bit of a crowd, but I am consider myself an advanced stand-up paddle surfer, and I don't enjoy surfing in crowds and try to avoid them when possible. And then the last thing on safety is you want to make sure that you're never behind your board when the white water is coming at you. So if my board is in front of me, it can be a projectile coming towards me with the white water. So dive out of the way, let the leash do the work, don't try to control your board um, in big whitewater situations. You can just dive under and let the leash do the work. So that covers a safety uh, very brief overview, but I want to make sure that that's clear. So now let's talk about paddling out. The first thing you want to do on the beach is assess the conditions. Don't just walk up to the beach not even really looking at the waves besides going, oh yeah, it looks fun, and paddling out. Watch the waves for five, 10 minutes and you might detect a pattern. Most people are gonna be surfing beach breaks. Um, if you are surfing a reef, the, you know, the pattern's a little bit more clear. If it's a reef point break, that you're able to say, okay, it's consistently breaking right over the reef. So you're gonna wanna paddle to the left and around the white water and make it easier on yourself. Beach breaks tend to break all over um, for the most part, but there, there can be a rhythm to a particular swell. Um, if the sets are coming, you know, five waves at a time and then there's a couple minute lull, you're gonna wanna time your paddle out right as the set is coming. You wanna be walking out, so you're maybe about where I'm at. So that way when the set clears, you're ready to go in calm water and hopefully get out before the next set comes. Also looking, maybe there's a consistent left that's breaking on the sandbar and you're gonna wanna avoid that and maybe go to the right of that left and uh, you're gonna save yourself a lot of time, energy, and frustration. So on the beach, watch the waves for five, 10 minutes. Once you do that, you're gonna walk out. I generally like to walk out until I'm about you know mid thigh to waist deep. There's not a big point in starting to paddle right here because you're gonna be doing extra work trying to get over this white water uh, when you could just be walking out and holding your ground. It's not to say that it's wrong to stand up here um, when you're this shallow, but I like to tell people walk out to mid thigh, maybe waist deep, and then you can stand up. And I have a whole video on standing up on your board that you can check out on the Blue Zone YouTube page uh, if you want some detailed tips on standing up. So you're gonna walk out, I'm gonna play this video forward, and what you want to do is you wanna put your hand on the tail of the board and put the nose into the air so that the board goes up and over the white water. So I'm just gonna press down on the very tail up and over the white water, I'm holding my ground, and I'm continuing to walk out. Again, you know, you could be standing, but it's a little bit easier, less energy, if I'm walking and pushing the board with my hand on the back of the board, okay? And then you can walk out and stand up. So now, once you've stood up, I'm on a pretty tiny board, so advanced subsurfers will be able to relate to this. If you're on a bigger board and you're a beginner, it's gonna look a little bit different, but the principles are the same. Now, if you haven't watched our video on the J-Stroke, definitely check that out. It's going to be super valuable in helping you paddle out through the waves, catch waves, all sorts of things. So I'm using the J-Stroke here in this video and every time I paddle out. And as I get to the white water, you're gonna notice my stance is a bit staggered. 
I'm getting the nose up, which is really easy to do on this tiny board. On a bigger stand-up paddle surfboard, you know, this is a 7.7 seven and it's low liters. If you have anything bigger, really, the bigger you get, the more you're going to have to step back on the tail and get that nose in the air so it's coming up and over the white water. My, my stance is low and I have that paddle in the water. Look at my paddle in the water. That's like my walking cane, all right? That is going to be my stability because I'm gonna hit the white water and I get all sorts of turbulence. So now I'm gonna continue paddling nice and low. Now as I get to the white water, something valuable you can do is one strong paddle stroke right here as the white water gets to me. So rather than you know letting the white water hit you with no forward momentum, what you want to do is try to do a strong paddle stroke like I do here as the white water comes and that helps punch the board through the white water. Again, you want that nose up, nice and low stance, paddle in the water, all right? Because all this water is super turbulent, okay? So you want to be low and have that paddle in the water again using the J stroke technique to to keep that paddle in the water and not have to switch sides so I can continue my forward momentum. So again, coming up to the white water, I'm gonna be nice and low. I'm bending down, getting the nose up with a little bit of back foot pressure on this back foot. And if you're on a bigger board, you're gonna to have to actually step back and get that nose up. You wanna be low, paddle in the water, and continuing to paddle forward. So you're just gonna repeat and a lot of people you know, ask about paddling out. How can I make it easier? That's what this video is about. But at the end of the day, you can do all this technique and, and these things are certainly gonna help you, but you have to have a certain, you don't have to have, but the, the higher your level of fitness, the easier it's gonna be. Because ultimately, we don't have a, a ski lift to sort of tow us out to the back here. We have to get there by our own power. So one of the things to keep in mind is you need to paddle. And especially when the opportunity presents itself. And again, if you've assessed the, the conditions, you're hopefully timing it that you're getting a bit of a lull. But like our main beach break here on a bigger day, there's not a lot of lulls like on a day like this. And I just need to go and I, I need to use these smart strategies. But at the end of the day, I need to paddle and, and I need to paddle hard. And uh, the higher your level of fitness, the easier that's going to be. But if you're using these tips, that's also going to help you a lot. So again, I'm low, paddle in the water. I can't stress that enough for stability. And then my tiny board is, you know, sinking. I'm basically almost up to my knees here. And I got that paddle in the water. I'm using the J stroke continuing to paddle out okay and i'm still very much on the inside trying to make headway and uh this next wave i believe it's gonna it's gonna knock me off so i'm gonna fall into the water here and now i can prone paddle so you don't have to start standing you can start prone paddling and oftentimes that's what i do because i'm on such a tiny board and when you do fall even if you're on a bigger board sometimes the time that it takes to, to stand back up on your board and then begin paddling again, that can be 5, 10, 20 seconds, depending on how fast you're doing it. And in that time, another set of waves is coming. So when you do fall, I really want to stress that you, you want to keep paddling as fast as possible. So what I often encourage, especially because maybe you only have 10, 20 feet to go to get to the outside, and rather than wasting time trying to stand back up, you want to just prone paddle. And you're going to put the paddle underneath your chest. Um, you can also put the handle underneath your chest. And I'm going to show you more detail here in a second. And then you're going to go. And it's the same thing. Go, go, go. Paddling, trying to get out. So let's take a look at what I'm doing to put the paddle under my chest. You want the blade face. The, the front face of the blade is going to be under your chest. So it's more... Um, it's not pressing against your chest, it fits flat on the board. So the, the outward facing blade face is under your chest. You're gonna put that kind of right on your sternum and you're gonna place the paddle on the board and then you wanna be centered on your board. So you want to have your belly button more or less just below your handle and basically you don't wanna be doing a wheelie 
and you don't want to be you know having the nose of your board go underwater so you want to be balanced on your board placing the paddle like so on the board putting my sternum onto the paddle and it should just barely be holding the paddle down it should actually be a very comfortable position shouldn't be stabbing you in the chest and you really want to just try and find the uh, most comfortable position for your paddle but it shouldn't be a lot of pressure there and you can make an adjustment like I just did and then you're going to paddle out with the paddle there. One thing to also think about is paddling with your head down as much as possible. Obviously you want to see what's going on in front of you but when you have your head up and you're arching your neck that puts a lot of stress on your neck and in your shoulder muscles and you're basically just using more energy. So the more energy we can conserve the better. So I'm going to be with my head down looking at the board and then occasionally looking up to see where I'm going and the paddle is underneath my chest and I'm not having to worry about it. You don't want to be like I am here where I'm basically doing a wheelie. I'm too far back on the board and it's just not very efficient and hydrodynamic and the opposite of that is being too far forward where the nose is bearing. So really take the time to find that sweet spot and the more you do it the more comfortable you're going to get with prone paddling. The other option is to put the handle of the blade of your paddle blade underneath your chest and on the board and that's a little bit trickier but that's also something to mess around with and the paddle just kind of sits behind you like so and you're able to paddle with the handle and the paddle dragging behind you. Um, you know, try it out, see how that feels. So the next thing I want to talk about with paddling out is once you're surfing and you've done your initial paddle out, one of the things that people tend to do, especially the beginners, is they surf all the way to the beach or way too far in. And what that does is it just makes you have a longer paddle out. Whereas when the wave kind of ends and, and recognizing it, you want to kick out. And if you can kick out, you know, when before you've gone all the way to the beach and then immediately start paddling back out, a lot of times you will be in sync with the ocean um, and be able to just get right back out even on a bigger day. So I kick out of the wave and then I'm immediately going into my paddle out and I'm in sync with the oncoming waves a little bit more than if I had gone another 100 yards into the beach. There's not a real reason to do that and I've just made a lot more work for myself. So think about, you know, this will be another video that I do, but think about if, if, the out, if the outside past where the waves is breaking is 100 and the beach is zero, we want to work in the space of usually 50 to 100 percent of that space. All right. Not really messing around with the 50 to zero percent of the space of the lineup, because a lot of times the wave is not really big or having a nice shoulder. So rather than riding all the way into the beach, you'll save yourself a lot of energy and time paddling out by kicking out and then immediately paddling back out to the outside. Okay. So think about that. Think about when you have the timing to get out and you see that there's a lull, that's when you're really expending your energy to get out. And I'd rather you spend a hundred percent of energy in a minute than 80% of energy over five minutes because you're just stuck and churning on the inside. So that is something to also think about. And one of the last things I want to cover as far as paddling out is the board kick when the white water gets to you. So generally, if you have white water that's above, depending on your ability, you know, waist to chest high, even if you're an advanced paddle surfer, once it gets above chest high, you're not really going to get over it. And even if you do, the amount of energy it takes to stand up and get over, you know, chest high whitewater is just not worth it. So you're either wanting to bail off to the side of your board, just dive under the water, let the wave um, go over you, let the leash do its job. Certainly don't jump in make sure that you're jumping away from your board so that the board's not coming back at you or you can try working on kicking your board out and over the white water so we're going to see this video here where there's a rather large wave and it's in a situation that is just breaking right where eric is 
So he's not going to try to paddle over this. It's just not – the potential for in, injury is way too high and it's just not going to happen. So he knows based on the situation he's in. So he's going to fall back and as he's falling, he's going to extend – with that leg, you can see him kicking out with his leg, and I'm going to show you a more detailed example of this in a second. And that's going to catapult the board up and over the wave, and the key is that he's falling back into the water. So worst case scenario, that board comes back this way. He's going to be under the water and not have that board flying at him. If you're on a board that is you know, 160 liters plus, this isn't really going to be an extremely safe or effective maneuver um, because it's just a lot of board um, and to, to be coming back at you and to be able to project up. Uh, so please be careful when you're practicing this. Also, the other key thing is to make sure we really should never be surfing in a crowd of surfers no matter what, but um, just to make sure that there are not surfers around you. This is to actually be a safer thing. So if there's someone behind you, you're able to kick it up and over the wave. And you'll see the board catapults up and over the wave rather than getting caught by this wave and drug backwards. Um, it's going to go up and over and into the clear. And then you're going to grab your board and be able to just continue paddling um, out, probably prone. Here's another example, kicking the board up and over. So you'll see, um, I'm going to show this other example. You know, you're falling back and you're kicking the board at the last moment before you go under the water. And that is going to hopefully catapult the board up and over. So I see this white water, I fall and I extend my leg and the board goes up and over the white water. So I'm going to show you and the pool here, a little bit more detailed example. So you want to have a little bit of forward momentum paddling at the whitewater. Obviously, I was in this pool and it was shallow, so I couldn't paddle forward. Um, but I'm going to fall back. And then as I fall, I'm going to just let kind of the uh, gravity and inertia of my body falling back in, against the board. And then as I fall, I'm going to extend that right leg off the end of the board, you see like almost like a kick, and that's gonna project the board out and away from me, okay? So that is also something that can save you time and energy when you're paddling out. So hopefully uh, you can use these tips the next time you're paddling out. It's probably the least fun part about subsurfing is not being able to duck dive and having to deal with a large board and a paddle and getting out, but if you use these tips, if you work on your fitness, if you paddle smarter and not necessarily harder all the time, although sometimes you do just need to paddle hard to get out, um, you're gonna have more fun and catch more waves and save the frustration. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Come give us a visit down in Nosara, Costa Rica at our all-inclusive Santa Paddle Surf Retreats and uh, hope to see you on the water.